Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be integrating a radical function. So we have the square root of x squared plus 4x plus 5 dx, and we're going to integrate this. Now, some functions are easy to integrate, such as cosine x or e to the power x, because we know whose derivative is going to give us that function. But in some cases like this one, it's not easy to guess the antiderivative of this function. So we have to use special methods. And one of the special methods that we use is the trigonometric substitution. How does it work? Let me explain. So we can write this as square root of x squared plus 4x plus 4, which is x plus 2 quantity squared plus 1. My goal is to separate the perfect square here, and then you'll see what I do with that. So this is equivalent to the square root of x plus 2 quantity squared plus 1 dx. Now this is where the special substitution or the trigonometric substitution comes in. Now if you have a if you have a function that is the square root, it doesn't have to be all the time, but let's say it's a square root of something like this one, a squared plus u squared, where u is a function of x, then this is calling for tangent substitution. If you have something like square root of a squared minus u squared, this is calling for secant. And if you have u squared minus a squared, this is calling for sine substitution. So our example is going to call for tangent, and we'll see why in a little bit. So I'm going to call x plus 2 tangent alpha. And from here, I'm going to get tangent squared alpha plus 1, which is equivalent to secant squared. Okay, let's write it down. x plus 2 is equal to tangent alpha. And if I d both sides, as you know, the derivative of x dx, which is 1 dx or just dx, is equal to the derivative of tangent alpha is secant squared alpha, and then we have to multiply that by d alpha. Okay, now we're going to plug this in. Let's see what, what happens when we do. We get the square root of tangent squared alpha plus 1 under the radical, and then multiplied by secant squared alpha d alpha. Now, tangent squared alpha plus uh, 1 is equal to secant squared, and then that gives us secant. Multiply by secant squared, we get secant cubed alpha. Now, this is an interesting function, and how do we integrate this? Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to separate it into two powers, and it's going to look like this. I'm going to write it as, let me use a different color here. Let's write it as secant alpha times secant squared alpha d alpha. So for this integral, I'll, I'll be using something called integration by parts. And here's how integration by parts work. If you're trying to integrate something like u times dv, then it can be written as uv minus the integral of v du. Now, if you put the v du on the left-hand side and differentiate both sides, that's going to give you the product rule for derivatives. That's where this rule comes from. So how do you pick which one is u, which one is dv? A lot of times we have to start by picking the dv, and dv is usually something that is easy to integrate. In this case, obviously, integrating secant is not easy. You'll notice that in a little bit. I'll tell you the formula. So secant squared is a better candidate for dv. Therefore, we only have one option for our u. So let's go ahead and write it down. u is secant alpha, dv is secant squared alpha d alpha. Now from u, I'm going to evaluate du, which is by differentiation. So the derivative of secant alpha is secant alpha tangent alpha d alpha. That's kind of like an interesting derivative because you can write secant alpha as cosine alpha to the power negative 1 and then use the power rule. That's what you get. From dv to find v, you have to use integration and the integral of secant squared is just going to be tangent alpha. In this case, I'm not adding the constant. I'm, I'll do it at the end. So now our formula tells us that we're supposed to multiply these functions and then subtract the product of these two functions. So we're going to have a minus sign here. So our integral, which is secant cubed alpha d alpha, is going to equal secant alpha tangent alpha minus the integral of, now I'm going to multiply secant tangent, secant times tangent by tangent, 
So that's going to give me secant times tangent squared. So now this is also a tough integral. It's not very easy to integrate right away because there is no you know, clear cut formula for this. But here's what we can do. We're going to be using a trick and this trick is actually very common. If you have tangent squared as part of your integrand, then it might make sense to replace it with secant squared alpha minus one because secant squared is equal to one plus tangent squared. We are allowed to do this. And why do we do that? You'll see in a little bit. That's going to help us. So this basically allows you to split the integral. But let's go ahead and replace the tangent squared with secant squared minus one first. Okay. So this is what I'm getting. When we distribute, we're going to be getting the following. So this is secant alpha tangent alpha. And if you multiply, you get secant cubed alpha d alpha. And then the double negation is going to give us a positive term, the integral of secant alpha d alpha. Now, here's one thing that's kind of interesting. This was the integral of secant cubed alpha d alpha. And we got that integral, the same integral again but with a negative one coefficient. So what we're going to do is we're going to put these two together by way of addition. So let's go ahead. Okay, the battery is dying, but we'll make it. So put the secant cube on both sides. That's going to give me two times secant cubed alpha d alpha. And then we got to talk about two things here. First of all, let's write the secant times tangent. And the question is now, what is the integral of secant alpha d alpha and how do you integrate it? Well, I made another video for powers of secant, so I'm going to go ahead and link it down below. You can take a look at it, but let me just go ahead and give this formula for you uh, to you right now so we don't have to spend too much time on it. But the integral of tangent, um, I mean secant alpha, is equal to ln of absolute value of secant alpha plus tangent alpha. And then at the end, we can put the C, but let's go ahead and do the following first. Now notice that the integral that I was looking for came up on the left hand side, but with a coefficient of two. So I would like to divide both sides by two to get the answer. And that's going to give me the following. I'll put a big one half on the outside and secant alpha tangent alpha plus ln absolute value of secant alpha plus tangent alpha. Now I'm ready to use my constant. As you know, that's super important add the C at the end. So this is the answer, but we got to back substitute. What is secant alpha? What is tangent alpha? Let's go ahead and find out. Okay. So secant alpha is equal to what? I don't know, but I do know tangent alpha is equal to X plus two. Great. So let's go ahead and start with that one. Tangent alpha is X plus two. Well, I will draw a right triangle with alpha being one of the right, um, one of the acute angles. And since tangent alpha is x plus 2, I'll name the legs this way. And from the Pythagorean theorem, this should give you something familiar. If you square x plus 2 and 1 and add them up and take the square root, that's what you get. So from here, secant alpha, since it's 1 over cosine, and cosine is 1 over square root of that, it's going to give me just the square root of x squared plus 4x plus 5. So that's my secant alpha. So let's go ahead and write our result in the final form. So we have the integral of the square root of x squared plus 4x plus 5, and that can be written as 1 half of secant times tangent. So how can I write it? I can actually use the x plus 2 and then times the square root of x squared plus 4x plus 5. Notice that this is what I'm using to write my integral in terms of x, and then plus ln now secant alpha will be replaced with the radical again, the square root of x squared plus 4x plus 5. And then the tangent alpha is just going to be x plus 2. And I'm going to close the parentheses and add my constant. And this is going to bring us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.